Like many, Jan Vincina was unexpectedly drawn into the Congo as a young man through a connection of a connection. But that's where he's remained his entire life, working and writing about the Congo. He was there during the Mobutu regime, and there when the university was closed, the students disappeared. He became one of the chief protesters and eventually left the Congo. The Congolese as a people have to find a way to say no to the most basic elements of corruption. Many of them said, we have no choice but to be corrupt. And we talked about the idea of a no corruption day. Maybe if there was a, a national no corruption day, it could be awareness. What's your reaction? What do you, what do you think about it? This sort of corruption is one that robs the lower levels of the administration, the army, the judiciary, anything you can imagine, of their pay. I mean, soldiers half of the time are not paid. So how do they survive? They have either to rob people, but plain robbing is, you know, is not yet the fashion, uh, or they ask for money. They, they, they set up barriers and they bribe people. Policemen is the same, are the same thing. So to fight corruption, you've got to make sure that all these people do get paid and that the money is not diverted by their bosses or the bosses of their bosses and so on. Um, once you can do that, then, then uh, you know, it will become easier uh, to fight corruption. In fact, what the feelings show, and this is why a no corruption day will be good, it will show first how strongly people at the bottom of the heap are committed to this, and they of course are. Secondly, it would hopefully be a, a no corruption day where people who normally ask for bribes would explain why they ask for bribes so that it would become quite clear over the whole hierarchy as to who causes corruption, what the roots of it are, and how you combat it. So that's for all these reasons and for an anti corruption day. <laughs> Haifai kuchoka na kujatiria. Kao nafia kuendelea mbele. Ushichoke. Hapana kulekea. Wende kumbele. Ushifate ya bantu. Chofa. What would you ask them? Well, I, I would uh, ask them uh, what, how much has life changed? Uh, since independence, uh, what were the high points and low points of these 50 years? Uh, do you see this uh, been a whole rash of uh, major concessions granted to uh, multinationals uh, to exploit the rich copper and cobalt? Uh, and other mineral deposits in uh, in Katanga, is any of that uh, going to make a difference in, in your life?
There are five things I remember about my first visit to Lubumbashi and the DRC. The first one is uh, the cars. Like in the United States, they drive on the right-hand side of the road. And like England, the steering wheel is on the right-hand side of the road, which makes for some very interesting and uh, very daring car maneuvers. I the second thing is there are no points in exact change in the DRC. Things just sort of round out. Another thing that everybody talks about in the DRC is that there's no direct route, there's no straight road from the capital city of Kinshasa to Lubumbashi, which is the major mining city. The thing that has uh, stayed with me the most, the thing I remember the most is the relationships that have been created since I first came to the Congo. Pierre and Sandu have remained constant email friends and, and hopefully someday we'll all be sitting around drinking coffee and looking back at this as a time when things started to change. remember is filming, taking pictures. Filming in Lubumbashi means explaining oneself. Listening to uh, people talk about how they've been stereotyped, you know, their fears, their worries about how their city looks and how they look to the outside world. And simply having to deal with the fact that you're taking somebody's picture in a place where it's often illegal to take any film or any video. And it's a good reason why I got arrested the first time I was yes. in the DRC. Yes, that's where I got arrested, the, uh, okay. the elephant. Okay. I was really intrigued with the traffic flow and the way the people and traffic and bicycles all interacted in a very fluid, organic motion, unlike where I'm from, where uh, right-of-way is a really big deal. There is a traffic jam. Yeah. I, I like it because it's uh, asked to turn minds in order to, to find a way. Yeah. And uh, this is an example of what you can say, this is common. found myself filming and watching very closely how people in cars interacted. And that's when I was approached and arrested and taken to the police station. From that point, I found myself um, 
basically being rescued by Pierre and others um, who explained my situation, including one of the police officers who was very intrigued with the fact that I was fascinated with how traffic flow worked. And I began to explain my theory. He thought that was a good thing, and he began to advocate on my behalf. Uh, people stopped you because uh, first, here it's forbidden to take pictures in public without uh, authorization. 